Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, attending this uh, evening's session on the Port Stanley Waterfront Master Plan. Uh, I think we've got, uh, we've got 27 attendees, which is great. Um, so in the interest of uh, respecting everybody's time, who did get here on time, we'll, we'll get started. Um, so my name is Mike Tucker. I'm a partner with Think Design and uh, the lead consultant for the Port Stanley Waterfront Master Plan. And I will do uh, a few more introductions in a moment. Before I do that, I just wanted to discuss with you the uh, goals and the agenda for this evening. So the purpose of tonight is to introduce the project. Uh, we do wanna gather some feedback uh, from you and we have a, uh, a mechanism to do that, which I'll explain more in a moment. And then of course, at the end, we'll have a, a question and answer period um, on the project. So the agenda for this evening is uh, to give you an overview of the project, um, we're going to talk about information gathering and the different ways we're going to do that. We're going to touch on opportunities and challenges, and, uh, and then we're going to discuss conclusions and next steps. So the tool we're going to use this evening for, uh, to make, help make this a little bit more interactive uh, with everyone here tonight is we're going to use a program called Slido. Uh, and this will allow you to answer some questions we're going to ask uh, during this presentation and to see real live results on your screen. So to use this tool, you need to uh, a smartphone or a tablet and you simply scan that QR code on your screen and uh, that'll bring you to the Slido website and uh, will help you follow along with your presentation and then answer questions, uh, the polling questions at uh, the appropriate time. Now, if you don't have a camera on your smartphone or it's not working for you, you can go to slido.com and you enter that number 843965 and that'll bring you to the presentation um, uh, to the, uh, the work following this evening. Now, the, uh, so the, the QR code basically works the same as if you were scanning a, a restaurant menu these days uh, due to COVID. So uh, we have six questions we're gonna ask you um, and uh, then you can also use this tool for the question and answer period at the end of the, uh, of the meeting. So just to, to test it, to see if it's working, um, to see if anybody's uh, been able to get on, um, we've got a, a test question and uh, the responses will appear uh, on the next slide. So the first one um, is what activities do you do at the waterfront? And you can answer this as many times as you like and uh, your responses will pop up on the screen. So. I'm hoping some of you, oh, there we go. So we got walk, swimming, sail, paddleboard. So this is great. So I'm glad to see that people are, are using it. So we will use this information. Uh, we will record it after this session. Uh, and this is just one of the many ways that we're gonna try to get uh, feedback uh, on the Waterfront Master Plan um, during this meeting. So, First, I wanna to talk to you just to give you a project overview. So we'll talk about, I'm gonna explain or introduce the study team. Uh, we're gonna talk about the purpose, scope and process and uh, the study timeline. So again, my name is Mike Tucker. I'm a planner landscape architect with Think Design. Um, so I'm the lead consultant and uh, Think Design, we're a firm that focuses on waterfronts, trails, park design, as well as uh, more detailed design implementation of parks, waterfronts, that sort of thing. And I'm joined by two of my colleagues at Think Design, uh, Misha Franta and Stacey Zonveld, both landscape architects with the firm, and they will be uh, participating more in the, uh, the Q&A portion and help manage that part of the, uh, the presentation. Um, also have Geor Georgina Rial um, here tonight. Um, she's with Rial C Cultural Consulting, and she will be overseeing the facilitating the First Nations and engagement aspects of the study and as well as providing strategic advice on the approach and, uh, and the plan itself and the recommendations. And then we also have with us tonight members of the technical committee. So this is made up of um, municipal and conservation authority staff and they are part of the advising us as we go through the process. They are our sounding board. They will make sure that what we are doing here um, is following the needs of the municipality and uh, is addressing all the, the different considerations. So we will be uh, working with this technical committee throughout the uh, study process. 
So the purpose of the study um, is to create a guiding document uh, for both operational and capital improvements to the waterfront area. Um, and we are building on the work of the recently completed Harbor Secondary Plan and uh, providing a strategy to realize the vision that we are, go that we are about to develop with the community. So um, now while at the same time, we do want to optimize and build on the existing infrastructure um, and municipal resources, uh, as we know that there's already been significant investment into the waterfront. Um, so we want to leverage that work as much as possible. So the study scope, the area we're looking at is shown here in green. Um, so it includes the visitor center area just south of Bridge Street, um, Glover Park, the east and west pier walkways on either side of Kettle Creek, uh, Huff Hoist Park, the breakwaters, and then the land, land south of Main Street. So the area that we understand is uh, locally known as the berm. And so those are the areas that this waterfront master plan is focusing on. So our, our next question for Slido is how do you get to the waterfront? Um, so if you were late joining, you can participate in these live polling questions by scanning the QR code that's on the top left corner there. And that'll bring you to the questions uh, when they are pop up on the screen and you can answer them. And then your, the responses are showing on the, the next uh, screen. So a lot of people walk. I'm expecting, I've, we've heard a bit about parking already. So I'm assuming some people must, must drive, but maybe none of them are participating tonight. Oh, well, we got one person that drives. <laughs> um, next slide. And again, you can answer those Slido questions uh, after I move past the slide if you. Uh, you weren't able to, to get your response in or didn't show up on the screen. Um, so a few points here on, uh, on the development of the study itself. So we're gonna um, undertake a detailed inventory and assessment um, across the waterfront. And of course this work has already begun and will continue throughout the study, um, especially as we gather new information and we, we, we are informed of new issues or opportunities that arise. Um, the opportunity, uh, the process will also involve a significant amount of community engagement. And I am gonna go into that a lot more detail um, later in this presentation, but I do wanna make it clear at this point that the community engagement aspect is a critical part of this process um, as it will help provide direction on all aspects of the plan. So at every stage of the process, there will be opportunities for the community to be engaged, to respond to the recommendations and provide, provide ideas. Uh, third point there is multidisciplinary approach. And we, and this really means that we're gonna look at it from a, the waterfront from a wide number of perspectives. Um, so this includes environmental, social, economic, and we wanna make sure that the plan accommodates a wide range of users. Um, we wanna make sure it's an all season plan, uh, that there's opportunities to do things all year round um, and various activities. And these all need to uh, fit of course, within the context of Port Stanley. So we wanna make sure that this is a, Ports, a plan for Port Stanley that, that addresses the local needs and uh, is, is, fits well within the community. Um, what we usually do on these plans, we provide a, a, a series of recommendations and uh, we provide all the background and the, the, the details regarding these recommendations to uh, make sure that they can be implemented. Um, so we will provide some designs, plans, sketches, um, we'll provide information on materials, size, shape of things. Um, so these aren't just a, a list of uh, recommendations, but there's a lot of backup that goes behind these. And then further to that is the implementation strategy. We know that it's important that there's recommendations and information on how the plan should be realized and implemented um, and how decisions and the process to implementing over the next 10 to 15 years. And so that's also a key part of the study. So the study timeline, we began the process in December. Uh, phase one was the background research. Uh, we are now in phase two. In phase two is community consultation, starting of course with uh, this evening, but that community consultation will extend throughout the entire length of the plan. So 
when we get to the draft waterfront master plan, there'll be opportunities for community consultation then and opportunities for input. And then even with the final plan um, as well, that we'll be looking for input then as well. So just a bit about that information gathering and how we're going to do that. Um, first piece I wanna talk about is just our consultation strategy in terms of internal, external, and First Nations. So internal cons consultation includes interviews with council and staff. Uh, these actually occurred in December. And then as I introduced earlier, the technical committee that we'll be uh, meeting with regularly throughout the process to, uh, um, to make sure that the plan is uh, addressing the needs of Central Elgin. External consultation, um, that includes three public information sessions. So the first one being this one this evening, we have two more after tonight. We have one in March, um, likely early March, and then we'll have one on probably later in April. We also have the online survey, and this is, has gone live, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, and we actually will have two online surveys. We have one that's live now, and we'll have one later in the process where we're looking for response to the recommendations and the plans that we produce. The central hub for all of this will be let's talk centralelgin.ca. And again, I'll talk more about that in a moment. And then the last point there, presentation to council. So we're looking to present to council in June. Third part of the consultation strategy is uh, the First Nations consultation. Um, Georgina Real, who I introduced earlier, she's leading this portion of the project um, and she's looking at outreach with First Nations, uh, likely talking circles and uh, interviews with key stakeholders. So our next Slido uh, question, what waterfront spaces, parks, facilities do you currently visit? Um, and so this could be Port Stanley or it could be elsewhere, um, you know, any waterfront that you visit regularly. Um, so if you, you don't currently visit the Port Stanley waterfront, um, it'd be interesting to, to hear from you. But um, if there's any on the Port Stanley waterfront that you visit in terms of, um, you know, the, the walkways or the, or the, maybe the main beach or little beach, um, and all of it would be, be an interest to know where you, uh, you focus your attention when it comes to waterfronts. Okay, thank you for your responses. I'll stay on here for another minute. Okay, next question is what new activities would you like to do at the waterfront? And this really is, of course, is a an important question for us. This is, you know, this type of information will help us plan, um, you know, the programming and the, the spaces uh, for this area of the waterfront that we're looking at, in particular the berm area, which um, of course is a really is sort of a blank slate. There's um, all kinds of opportunity there and it's, it's gonna be up to the community to help us decide, um, you know, what's appropriate there. Okay, thank you very much for your, your thoughts there. Um, so the central platform or focus of the engagement strategy really is the online engagement platform, let's talk centralelgin.ca. So um, you, if you go to let's talk centralelgin.ca, you can then navigate to the Port Stanley Waterfront Master Plan project page. Um, and this is where all the information will be or the opportunities to engage with the project. So. When you visit the first time on this site, please do register. Um, and then as new information or new opportunities come up for engagement, you can, you'll receive an email and you'll be the first to know that there's a, you know, a new meeting or a new opportunity to provide input. Um, but, but currently today, there are already a number of ways to provide your input. So I'm just gonna go uh, through those. The first one is the ideas tool. So this is like a post, you know, post-it notes on a board. You write down your idea and you, it gets posted, you can then um, 
respond to people's posts or comment on them. And you can also like them. So if you think that somebody's got a really great idea, um, you can like it and uh, maybe write a comment in support of it. Um, or I guess on the flip side, if you think that a comment um, has its own challenges that maybe need to be considered, you could also comment there as well. So it's interactive. Obviously, you're you're interacting with your uh, your you know your fellow citizens, and uh, of course, we do take all this input seriously, and we'll look at all of it um, to help direct the plan. The second one's my favorite tool, which is the Places tool or Drop a Pin. Um, so this is where you can put comments directly on a plan of the waterfront, and uh, you can also similarly like the. Uh, um, the previous one, you can respond to people's posts, um, you can attach photographs, and you can like, um, like the, the pins that are dropped as well. So it's, again, interactive. The difference here is that you're spe specifically showing a location, which is really helpful in case it's hard to describe uh, you know, where you think a certain, you know, there's a certain issue or idea that you think needs to be investigated. We also do have a Q&A tool on the site. So um, after tonight, if you don't get your question answered or if you think of something afterwards, at any point during the process, you can post your question here um, and then they will be uh, answered uh, by a team member um, and publicly viewable to everybody. So if it's a question that is very, you know, it's not specific to you and you'd like to share your question with the, with the uh, on the site and you think everybody would benefit from it then ask your question here and we'll, we'll provide the answer. And then there's a survey that's just been launched uh, this evening. So it's the first of two surveys. Um, this survey number one focuses on current use and vision of the waterfront. And we plan to have this up for at least uh, three weeks. So we think it'll, it'll be up till about February 10th. So uh, after this meeting, if you wouldn't mind going again to the site logging in and answering the survey it would uh, it would really help the process. So I got a few more slides here on opportunities and challenges and a few more Slido questions and then uh, um, we can take uh, question and answers. So opportunities and challenges that we've started to um, um, investigate or we've heard about um, include creating housing and generate income through development. Um, extending and intensifying Main Street. And again, this is coming out of the secondary plan work for the Harbor Secondary Plan, and uh, we're building on that plan. So um, another idea is ex expand the waterfront trail network. There's a real opportunity there. Um, of course, people like to walk around the waterfront, so there, there's a real opportunity there around the berm, of course, to, to provide a trail. Um, enhancing the waterfront's biodiversity. We've heard a lot about environmental stewardship and opportunities to improve, you know, opportunities for habitat or uh, greening of the space. Um, so that's a, there's a real opportunity to make sure that's an integral part of the plan. And then create an all season waterfront so that it's not waterfront that's focused just on the summer, that there's things for, for uh, residents and visitors to do all season long when visiting the waterfront. Uh, some of the challenges we've heard. So maintain public access and views to the waterfront. That's always imperative anytime we do a waterfront plan. Um, you know, we don't wanna be building right along the edge of the waterfront. We wanna make sure that, uh, you know, none of it's private, that it's all publicly accessible and that the views to the water are open. Um, parking, of course, is an important consideration. No doubt there's gonna to have to be some parking somewhere on the waterfront, part of this plan. So we wanna make sure it's integrated sensitively um, it's not negatively impacting other uses or, you know, um, parking is not necessarily the highest and best used, of course, of waterfront land, but it's, uh, you know, it's often ne necessary. So we'll make sure that we incorporate parking as best we can to not negatively impact the different aspects of the waterfront. Third point, of course, is that it, it is formally uh, impacted contaminated lands. It is capped and that with that brings some challenges or strategies that need to be followed to uh, not impact the uh, contaminated lands so uh, or to make development really expensive so we'll uh, we'll need to work with those within those constraints to uh, to make sure that we're not um, impacting that land further and then finally protecting uh, new amenities from wave uprush of course it is a waterfront we need to be consider you know um, the impact of wind water uh, periodic flooding that sort of thing all needs to be considered uh, 
on the, on the site. So based on that, I'm curious to know what you see our opportunities at the waterfront that maybe we've missed, or if you think further uh, discussion, you know, maybe on the ones we've already uh, mentioned. So we'll leave it on this one. This might, this one might take a little more, uh, more thinking for some, but um, so forest area, certainly there's opportunity to uh, provide some, you know, additional tree cover. It is a large space, so um, that might be part of it. Water slide, walking trails, maintaining commercial viability of the harbor, restaurants, ice skating, bird watching. Okay. While these are coming up, so the next one is going to be, of course, what are the challenges? So again, are there challenges we missed, or are there, you know, some of the challenges that we've already mentioned? Do they need to be, uh, you know, considered further in a different way? So I'll go to that next slide now. Challenges. Geese, definitely always a challenge on a waterfront. Incidentally, we, we've, we've discovered some uh, a new technology that might help out on that, which is interesting. So we haven't had a client yet tested out. It's fairly new. So we'll, uh, we'll see if, it, uh, if it's something we can uh, pilot here. Yeah, waterfront safety, definitely. Okay, so I've just got one slide left after this, and then we're going to get to the uh, conclusion and next steps. Um, or sorry, we'll get to the question and answer. So, I've already mentioned this a few times, but uh, let's talk centralelgin.ca is where we'd really appreciate it if you can go after, maybe go right after this meeting and uh, take part in that survey um, and all the other tools we have online for, for input. Um, and then uh, public information session number two is tentatively scheduled for March 3rd, 2022, but we'll, uh, that's still to be confirmed. And that session was to be originally uh, an in-person session. We were going to host a design charrette, ideally. Um, but because of COVID, we're likely going to have to do something remote. And uh, so we're, we're figuring out how now to do that to make it more interactive, something similar to this, maybe. Um, but definitely, we want to make sure it's not just a presentation that we're getting some feedback on these things. Um, so again, I mean, the engagement process for this is happening throughout the project. And we really want to make sure that uh, you know we have lots of opportunities for people to uh, um, to engage in the project and, and receive their input um, because without that input, this project is going to be very difficult to uh, for us to do. And of course, it's not going to be meeting the needs of Port Stanley residents, so or uh, or any other visitors and that sort of thing to the to the area, you know, for all of Central Elgin. So again, consultation. We really want to emphasize that. Mike, sorry to interrupt you. Can, sure. can I, it's a, uh, can you just reiterate, uh, I'm seeing a few comments on Slido about time for responses. Can you just reiterate that you'll be able to uh, view those responses even after the question moves on so persons can continue to add there? Can you just go over that one more time, please? Sure. Well, I believe, I believe they can. Um, I might have to ask Misha to confirm if there's an issue there, but a lot of these same questions are on this, on the uh, survey. So, um, if, if, if you're not able to go back and, and respond to those questions and I can, we can flip through this after, during the question and answer, we can, um, we can, or after the question and answer, we can flip back to some of those, but rest assured, all of this, all these questions, um, are sort of answered on the survey or asked on the survey. So, um, uh, so that might, hopefully that will work for people if, uh, if there's an issue. So in terms of the questions, we do have um, 
two, two uh, uh, ways that you can ask them right now. So one is on Slido. And when I go to the next slide, that's where you can post your question and it'll come up on the screen. Um, the other one is to raise your hand uh, with the button on Zoom to ask your question live. So if you do raise your hand, you want to ask a question, um, you can, uh, we'll let you know that you can then turn on your microphone and you can ask your question. Um, and then after you're done asking your question, if you can turn your microphone back off and lower your hand, that would help us uh, make sure that we can uh, be more efficient with the question and answer. So you can use either one. We'll alternate back and forth between Slido and Zoom. Uh, and I would ask that maybe if you, if you have quite a few questions, maybe just ask one at a time. And then once uh, you know, other people have had a chance to ask their question, you could either raise your hand or, or pose your question on, on Slido. So um, just to, to give everybody a, an opportunity. So we do have quite a bit of time to, uh, um, to, uh, for this session. So we'll, you know, we'll be here as long as, as necessary. Um, within reason, of course, but so don't feel like we're, uh, we're rushing you out. So we've got some questions here. Um, so the first one being, how can local association like the, like the PSVA assist? So I think the, the, that the best way to um, participate probably at this point um, is to go on to that, to the uh, let's talk central login.ca and provide input through that um, process. I mean, I think immediately that's a, that's a good way to do it. Uh, we had a similar question from a uh, school that wanted to assist and, and uh, so we suggested that that might be a, a good way. Um, you can also, of course, provide any written comments on anything um as we go through the process at this point of course we are just in the information gathering stage so there's um uh you know there's no plans to respond to we haven't made any decisions um and so we're we're really looking for you know it's it's open everything's up on the table and open for discussion so um so that might be the, the best way to to go to the post things on the on the the map it tool uh on the the, the um the, the sticky note one and that sort of thing. Um, see, they keep changing, so it's hard for me to say. What is the plan for funding the development? Will private development, so I'm gonna move my little zoom bar here, be involved? So there will be, um, uh, you know, all kinds of ways that this will be funded. So um, with any master plan, um, well, when you have a master plan, there's often opportunities with upper levels of government where there's different funding opportunities, um, especially on coastal areas, you know, with, with uh, climate change and flooding and that sort of thing. We've seen recently opportunities for government funding on projects like that. Um, there is also, of course, the extension of Main Street and that development, and a lot of that will help pay for uh, any improvements in the area as well. So it could be things like development charges um, or public private spaces, that sort of thing. So everything is on the table. It won't be just uh, public funds, you know, taxpayer dollars going to, to, uh, to fund the project. There will be, uh, you'll be looking at all opportunities out there to, to fund the project. Uh, there's a question there, when do you expect Lakeview development to start by Prespa home builder in Port Stanley? I do not know the answer to that. I'm not sure if, uh, Anybody on the, the technical committee can uh, wants to comment? I can answer that, uh, Mike. We're not sure. Uh, we have not seen any uh, formal applications or plans as of yet, and we're not aware of when they propose to start. That, that question's outside the scope of tonight's meeting. So if we could maybe just keep the questions based on the waterfront master plan and the public amenity areas, that would be great. Thanks, Lloyd. Um, I see another question about that. Have you designed waterfront areas for other municipalities that have declared a climate emergency? Um, we have done a number of waterfront master plans. Which ones have um, uh, declared a climate emergency? I'm not sure. I believe, well, Kingston maybe has, but we've done a lot of work in Kingston and we continue to do some work there. Um, we did a waterfront master plan just wrapped up in Sarnia that is getting a lot of press. So if you're curious about some of the types of work that we do. Um, that was, we were part of a team on that one and that was a much bigger scope, but 
um, Sarnia, we've done work, Coburg, Cornwall, um, so, and we're, we're finishing up a plan in Leamington and Arnprior as well. So those are all waterfronts that we are currently working in or have, uh, we're, we're almost completed in. Oh, will the presentation be available online? Yes, we're recording this for the purposes of putting it online. So it will be on the, uh, on the site and uh, we'll be doing that uh, shortly after this meeting. Mike, we have a raised hand. Oh, okay, great. Stacy's trying to figure out how to give them access, are you? <laughs> to ask the question? Um, yes. I see one from Roger. Yes. It says uh, that I have to promote to panelists. Sorry, Mike. Oh, really? Okay. I'm not seeing can, any. Can, can you, sorry, uh, Stacy, is there a feature on your menu that says allow to talk? If you go to more, yes. uh, more? and then it yeah. says to promote to panelists. Oh, really? Yeah. If it's a, if you go allow to talk, if you have that available, that will allow them to ask a question. It's not though. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, we well, can promote them to panelists, and then you can demote them. Okay. <laughs> no offense to Roger. So Roger, you might be able to turn your microphone on it and ask your question now. Are you there, Roger? You have to unmute. Yeah, because unfortunately we can't unmute people, we can only mute them. Mm -hmm. Okay, finally, hallelujah. All right. <laughs> the uh, Yeah, finally the control panel with the mute and unmute option <laughs> came up. All right, perfect. All good. Ragnar, I'm on the phone. Go away, bloody dog. Anyways, uh, the question is: is very much interested in everything you're doing. It's wonderful. Um, what is there? Are there any? Is how do we get the municipality to look at doing an actual harbor development plan, which would fall into the overall? harbor lands development plan i mean after all we are port stanley uh you know it's one of the nicest harbors on this side of the lake and i i'm not understanding why there is there's no effort uh, to kind of merge the two together how can you have a harbor development plan for the lands without a proper harbor development plan for the harbor is there anybody on the uh, technical committee like to take that one on Uh, maybe I can take a shot uh, as part of development of the harbor. Uh, so, for example, a marina or uh, something like that, that would be contingent on other capital investment uh, to help protect the harbor. Uh, when you go down there, uh, anytime that there's a wind out of the south southwest, uh, it gets pretty rough in that area. So uh, in order to develop the harbor into a marina, that would require further capital investment. Uh, and that's currently being investigated by the municipality uh, as well as a grant application to the federal government uh, for additional works within the, the uh, within Port Stanley and, and especially around the harbor itself. Thank you. Okay, thanks Roger. Thanks Lloyd. Do we have any more? I know we were focusing on the uh, slider one, so it doesn't look like we have any more hands up. So. See if we can uh, answer a few more questions on Slido. So, will there be residential housing built on the berm? Um, there will. There will only be residential that would be part of the Main Street extension, likely. Um, so that, but not on any of the areas that we've shown in green. So, um, the green areas um, are basically parkland or public lands. So, um, and that is our focus for the for the study. 
Um, there's a question there, often people are camping in this area, you could perhaps consider an area to generate revenue for overnight stays. Um, perhaps camping is, is something to look at. I'm not sure, considering the fact that it is impacted lands, what the, uh, if, if there's different uh, um, level of, uh, of cleaning of the, of the lands that would need it for camping, but um, we can see where that one goes with the, throughout the process. Question, has anyone considered a butterfly conservatory? Um, I don't think we've heard that one yet. So uh, we can, well, I guess, no, we have, I have heard that one. Um, so we could look at what exactly that means. Um, obviously with naturalization and butterfly gardens and pollinator gardens, that sort of thing, uh, that could certainly be part of, of the plan. Uh, could a sightseeing tower be considered within a walking trail and nature reserve? Um, sure, definitely. That's, uh, uh, that's definitely all on the table. Um, on the top of my page here, not a glamorous part of the development. However, wondering what considerations are in place for washroom facilities, water stations, first aid, et cetera. So yeah, definitely all of that needs to be considered. Um, you know, obviously you're introducing people to the, to a park space, there will be need to be those, those types of amenities will need to be uh, considered. Uh, given we have birds of prey that need open sky near the lakeshore to hunt, will this be considered in the planned development? I, oh, something has happened. Native tree things for us. Um, certainly wildlife habitat is, is something we do need to consider. So uh, we'll, we'll be looking at that on the, the plan. We have another raised hand from... Okay. David? Yeah, okay. Can you hear me? We can. Yes. Thank you, David. Okay, terrific. Um, uh, Mike, I'd like to go back to the question of the community consultation. Sure. And your mention that you would be looking uh, at uh, resources beyond what is avail readily available to the municipality through the tax base or other kind of municipal programs. And I'm wondering whether you have any plans in your consultation to make contact with various community organizations in Port Stanley to see what their particular interests might be or opportunities that they might see for becoming involved in the development of the, uh, of the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, nothing official, but we're, we're definitely interested in um, any ideas that, that different groups have. So, because uh, we understand there are quite a few groups that would be uh, would be interested in participating in, in different projects or uh, you know ideas that might come up. So, so uh, if, we're we're open to all of that. Okay. Um, so if if there was an opportunity created uh, for you to make contact with those groups or to engage in some way, you might uh, be willing to pursue that opportunity. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, we'll we'll consider all, you know, opportunities. And I think, you know, very often it can be just a, um, you know, maybe it's a, it's a bit of back and forth on an email or it's a phone call, that sort of thing, depending on the, the situation. So um, what we, what we, you know, because a lot of times we can, um, you know, through, through some, con you know, uh, communication, we can, we can, you know, figure these things out. So we don't have any of thing official in terms of a number of meetings set aside, but um, we'll, we'll consider all, you know, opportunities that are out there, so. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, there's a question about an outdoors farmer's market. Sure, exactly, you know, it could be, those are all on the table. Um, one about that was how, has consideration been given to a dog beach? Cherry Beach in Toronto shares a dog beach with a blue water beach and picnic area. Um, Perhaps a dog beach. Again, you know, nothing's been decided. So um, potentially the, the difference I would say between maybe Cherry Beach and um, the, this area that we're talking about, um, I would hate to see some dogs swept away. Cherry Beach is a little more protected and uh, not as, you know, not as big waves. So whether or not it's appropriate for a dog beach, I'm not sure. And uh, um, perhaps the, the beach area is at a premium. So whether or not people want to share a beach with, with dogs is another consideration, but all things that we would look at and, and look for feedback on. Um, how could this development help lower our ta property taxes and water rates, which are some of the highest in the province? Um, well, I guess, you know, more, you know, 
a larger com com commercial tax base or you know um, more tourism that sort of thing will will help you know generate um, you know funds for the municipalities so um, ideally that that would be a you know one way that it would help uh, potentially lower taxes um, the presentation indicates that you will provide a framework for waterfront uses. Will plan actually propose specific features, location, costing, and timetable? Yeah, exactly all of those things, Nigel. Um, we'll, it'll be quite a detailed plan. So it'll be based, you know, there'll be plans, um, you know, drawings of, of different aspects of it, locating all the recommendations. Um, so it'll be located, we'll cost all the recommendations, and we'll put it into a, a timeline so that at the end of the project, you know that the certain recommendation when it's being recommended, and uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that the you know things change on a plan. We always say in our plans that you know priorities of councils change, which usually means the priorities of the community has changed. Um, you know, and this is a long-term plan. It could be you know a ten to fifteen-year plan. So, but it's all laid out there at the end, um, and then it can be adjusted and refined as as things happen uh, on the waterfront. Um, question about how will you investigate the parking issues, especially, especially the seasonal variation? Um, well, we, we definitely don't want parking to, to drive the, um, the, the project, which often, you know, just if you, if you look at it from, uh, you know, how many parking spaces do you need? And of course, you always hear you need a lot more. Um, but we'll, um, you know, obviously we want to provide some parking so that people don't have to, you know, they can get access. Um, especially maybe in the, in the lesser busy times and the off season periods where you, you are going to want to drive. Um, so what we're going to have to see, it really depends on what the program is, you know, how much parking do you need for um, certain events and facilities. And, uh, and so we're, we're definitely going to be balancing the parking. I, I think probably in the end, a solution where parking is located, not immediately on the site that we're looking at, but, you know, in the adjacent areas, or maybe offsite, and then there's an opportunity to for people to walk in. Um, you know, all those different options are going to have to be looked at. You know, maybe I know eventually maybe public transit would be something that would be looked at, or a shuttle that may not be feasible in the short term, but maybe in the long term. Um, so we need to to look at all those options to to get people to the site without just covering the whole site in cars. Uh, question there: How affected is this plan if Port Stanley leaves Central Elgin? Um, that is a question I would definitely cannot answer. I don't know if that's a, is that a hot topic uh, right now? Is there anybody on the committee that wants to address that one? I mean, the one thing about a master plan that once it's in place, I don't know if it really matters which, if it's a good idea and if it's supported, um, you know, it doesn't really matter where the, you know, where the municipality sits in relation to, uh, uh, you know, if it's a different community, but, um, in regards to that question, Mike, I think it's uh, um, uh, we're not able to answer hypothetical questions like that at this point in, yeah. in this uh, in this exercise. All right, thank you. Um, there's a question there. The land is getting more expensive, valuable day by day. Who ultimately makes the decision to sell it? Uh, is there a financial return Central Elegant has in mind? Um, I, I think it that would be a question that would be just. I don't think there's a anybody can really know the answer to any of that until we actually have a plan in place. So, um, um, I see comment there. Free parking passes are given to, to residents in Barry, and uh, there was another other location there. And that does seem to be uh, that's a that's a bit of a trend. And there's the other trend that is happening, which I, I don't think Port Stanley would necessarily be interested in. Some places are looking at not even offering parking for uh, people from outside a community. So um, it's, uh, it, I'm sure it's something that's gonna come up. We've got a bit of experience dealing with the parking from that standpoint, but um, you do wanna be careful. You wanna make, I think we wanna make sure that it's still uh, open and inviting for people from outside of Central Elgin or Port Stanley, wherever, wherever you wanna draw that boundary, you wanna make sure that uh, people can get to the waterfront. Uh, comment about parking on bicycle parking on the berm for sure. That's uh, should be lots of opportunities for that. Um, 
question on shuttle for public transit would be a good beginning to the parking problem. Do you have experience with this form of other communities? Um, it's often come up having shuttles. Um, and, uh, you know, often sometimes it is run by a private um, entity, maybe to support, um, you know, something that's an anchor on the waterfront. They're trying to get people down to their business, whether it's a restaurant or a, sometimes it's a marina. Um, so that is something that we could look at. Fort Stanley has a very rich history of entertainment. Um, oh, sorry, I missed that one. I can't keep up with these questions. So I don't know, Misha, if there's a way to focus on any of these. Um, the plan is intended to make the waterfront coherent. What are the design elements that will do this? Um, definitely, you, want, you do want a coherent plan. You want to make sure that it all works together and fits within the Port Stanley, um, you know, charm and, and aesthetic. Um, so I don't, we don't know what those design elements will be at this point, but that is something that obviously we'll be looking at, and I'm sure you'll be looking at to make sure that we we uh, address. Um, so uh, we don't want this to to look and feel different. You know, you want to feel like you're in Port Stanley and not not in some other place, uh, you know, in Ontario or somewhere else in the world. Um, consideration rental bikes with depots around the village certainly could be something we could look at and recommend as part of this plan. Have you considered engaging in design competition that could seek proposals from re regional college programs focused on sustainability and regional artists? Um, you know, those are things that could be looked at once, uh, you know, a master plan is something that, um, you know, just sets the framework. So it's going to end up being multiple projects after that um, to be implemented. So one master plan is not going to be, you know, they're not construction drawings, everything's not figured out. So things like um, incorporating artwork uh, throughout the waterfront, and there's all kinds of ways that can be done. It doesn't have to necessarily be standalone pieces. It could be um, artistic interpretation and inclusion and the way paving is done or hand railings, um, planting design, um, all of that could include art. So very much there's an opportunity to, you know, to look at incorporating local artists into the final plans uh, for the waterfront as they roll out. Would adding to the berm include adding to light pollution? Well, I think, you know, lighting today with LEDs and, and being dark sky friendly or compliant um, is something that definitely we'd be recommending for this plan. Um, is, there any, is there any road plan to avoid heavy traffic jam during the summertime? Um, that would not be, yeah, that would be beyond the scope of this plan. I'm not sure if there's any, uh, anything that's happening uh, uh, in terms of future planning for the municipality, but um, definitely understand that, you know, Traffic is, uh, is a bit of an issue or always can be in the summer months. So um, if there are recommendations that can come through this plan, they would somehow help alleviate that or address it, then we can, we can certainly look at that. Uh, how much lease to own figures in this plan? I don't, uh, don't know if that would actually, uh, if I understand the question correctly, I don't think that would probably really factor into this plan at all. I think it's probably beyond a future, uh, future thing to look at. Um, how could this development help lower our property taxes and water rates? Which I've, okay, I've already answered that one. What, are consider what considerations are being made to ensure safety for residents and visitors going into the future? Well, safety in terms of water access or proximity to the water, um, lighting, you know, um, all those things are definitely going to be considered in the design. So it's always something as landscape architects, something we always have to look at is, is you know, the safety of people using outdoor public spaces. So that would be a key part of everything that we do. Um, Port Stanley has a very rich history of entertainment. Should we look to the past to help shape our vision for the future? Um, if there's any, yeah, if there's anything that we should be aware of in terms of um, Port Stanley's past, um, please do bring it to our attention. Um, that's, uh, um, that would be a, you know, something we would look at. I just saw one pop up there, but please explain your, your goose, uh, your goose solution. 
the uh, I don't remember the name and I don't want to make this an advertisement for a company, but there is a product out there that with lights will um, help deter geese from congregating if these um, they're a low light. It's not at eye level. I'm not even sure if it's um, can be perceived by human eyes, but um, supposedly geese don't like it and they'll stay away from areas. So we have not contacted the supplier. It's just something in the last few weeks we've run across um, that could be of interest and could work. So um, we're, we're interested in that. And I'm, I think through all of our master plans, every master, you know, every area has issues with geese. The traditional uh, solution for dealing with ge geese has typically been um, not having grassed areas right up to the water, having naturalizing it, um, making sure that it doesn't feel like an open space and that's safe for geese. They don't, they don't want to have predators, you know, close by. So that's traditionally been how you would handle it with, with geese, but there's this other solution, this technical solution that's supposedly solar run, um, cost effective, you know, doesn't uh, create any pollution. Um, that supposedly will deter geese as well. But again, I'm assuming that this same technology doesn't negatively impact, you know, other wildlife, um, but that, that we need to explore more. Um, can you share more about the third phase of the public engagement and consultation with Indigenous community members and leaders? Um, why not throughout the process? Well, just to clarify, so it's not in the third phase. Um, that was not a phased that particular diagram was not referring to phases. It was just talking about the three different parts of the engagement process. So um, I don't know, Georgina, if you want to say anything about the process itself, because I know that we're still um, figuring it out, the details, but First Nations in engagement is something that's happening throughout. Um, it's not just left to the end. So, Georgina, did you want to add to that at all? Oh, yes, thanks, Mike. Um, so the phases we'll have is uh, they'll be con conducted with the three um, respective nations. Uh, so the nations are the Muncie Delaware, uh, the, the Oneida of the Thames, and the Chippewa of the Thames. And we're conducting um, talking circles. So this is based on traditional talking circles, um, even though we're using a social platform only again because of COVID. So we want to make sure that we connect directly with the respective communities. Uh, to ensure that they get their input, knowing that they are closely connected uh, to the waterfront. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, their voices are heard throughout the process. All right, thanks, Georgina. Um, in regards to safety and increased development towards Little Beach, are there discussions of increasing lifeguard coverage? Um, we haven't heard anything about that yet, but that could be something we look at through this plan. So um, it's, it's getting a bit out, out of the scope, I think, in some ways, but um, as it's probably part of a larger discussion that we're not aware of yet, but um, it's a, certainly something we can, we can look at. And many of our plans we do often provide, of course, the facilities and the, and the, the means of providing uh, lifeguards along the waterfront. So that is something that we definitely would look, maybe not towards this, definitely a little beach, because that is technically outside of our study area, but perhaps there's other areas in the waterfront that that needs to be considered as well. So we will, we'll have to look at that. Um, any other questions I've missed? I think a lot of these are just recycling again. <laughs> Some question, what's the best insight you've been asked in another similar forum? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I don't think I can answer that one. Every community is different, so. Have the conservation authorities helped inform the plans? Um, very often, yes, you know, in this situation, I know that um, there may not be a lot that the Conservation Authority needs to do um, because of the, the lands are already, um, you know, designated for, uh, for this plan, for the, for the development. So, um, but very often we will work with Conservation Authorities in terms of making sure that, you know, things like flooding and, and 
species um, selection and that sort of thing are all addressed. We have another raised hand, Mike. Okay. Great. Dan. Thank you. Just a, a question. The recent Zuzek study identified the vulnerability of the harbor and identified the very significant cost of reinforcing both the harbor walls and uh, perhaps extending the harbor walls and rock buffers to protect against flood events, overlapping, et cetera. That would seem to be pretty important if we're going to look at what we're going to do on the berm. Uh, will that be considered as part of your study? Yeah, it will be. So, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not intimately familiar with that study yet, but it has been provided to us and it is something that we've been asked to, to look at and consider. So uh, it definitely will be considered part of the plan. Great. Thank you. Um, I think we've answered this one yet. Are there any financial constraints or limitations on the plan? Um, not that we've been given, um, you know, there's, there's the reality of the real, we want to make sure that this is an implementable plan, that it's realistic for, um, you know, the budget that can be, uh, you know, um, spent on it. So um, no dollar value has been addressed yet, but I, I think uh, the one thing that helps make these plans manageable is the fact that um, it is a long-term plan. It's not something that's done in, you know, just a couple of years. Um, and then there are those opportunities for funding um, that come from upper levels of government. So and that's one of the reasons why you do a plan like this. You don't necessarily, you know, um, do it because you think that the municipality is going to pay for everything. Once you have a plan prepared um, and then these opportunities come up, you, you can quickly go after those funding opportunities and uh, try to uh, secure some of that money. And that, that happens with a lot of our master plans. We know that, um, especially now with COVID and the government, putting money into to certain programs, um, these things do come up and they do happen. So, um, so they, that's one of the reasons why you, you, you wanna have this master plan in place is to, to, to capitalize on those opportunities. Uh, this question, can provisions be made to conserve already existing wetlands on the berm? Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, there are some wet areas on the berm, but they're, they're, they're wetlands, I'm not, uh, that would be the definition, but um, you know we're we're going to have to look at the whole berm area and figure out what what makes the most sense. But um, possibly you know incorporating some sort of naturalized areas that maybe are seasonally wet uh, might make sense. But again, we're we're uh, we're not at that stage yet. And question: Are we able to have open air meetings? I don't think so, but I'm not the provincial government, they would be the ones to decide that, but um, we'll, we'll see what happens for the next meeting in uh, beginning of March. Um, that one we were hoping to have as an open air meeting. I suppose if things do change and if the, uh, the restrictions are lifted to allow it, um, that's uh, totally feasible. I mean, that's something that we're prepared to do. Um, I know originally the municipality was prepared to do, but again, we're, we're controlled by what, uh, what the current restrictions are um, for the province. Um, have you ever included an outdoor theater performance area into a waterfront plan? Yeah, uh, yes, that's a fairly um, you know popular you know ask. The one challenge, of course, I think with this location is the wind. Somebody put wind, 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 and uh, one of the responses before. Um, so we'd have to see how that could be incorporated, but. Uh, certainly, that's something that, uh, you know, might certainly be a, a good opportunity uh, here. Um, there's a swing bridge being looked at from a berm area to the park. Um, that's the first I've heard of that idea. That would probably be very expensive. I'm not sure that's where you want to put, you know, your money, but um, it's something we could look at if that's... Uh, you know, if everybody wanted it, I guess we could, but um, you know, we want to make sure we have to, we have to balance the spending. Um, we have to look at the, the realities of what's possible. And, uh, you know, so there have been places that we've worked where they, you know, they've got some grand ideas of what they'd like to see, but you realize that, you know, it'd be a hundred million dollars, not that a swing bridge would be a hundred million, but sometimes the idea is just, a, they're just, uh, you know, not feasible for the, you know, for the community and they're, and they're only gonna be benefiting a small group. So we do wanna to try to make sure that we benefit as many people as possible. Uh, 
Um, I'm looking for other questions. Maybe we haven't answered yet. Like the one question was with respect to the Harbor plan, why not just come up with a plan and then worry about the funding after? Okay. So it gets back to the, the, the issue that the Harbor needs to be protected before you, you can do anything there. And it gets, again, that's back to funding. Um, so when we say protecting the Harbor, it would be the extension of uh, the West breakwater. And until that can be, um, funded or assisted funding by upper levels of government, any redevelopment in the harbor would be um, very difficult, we'll say. Okay, thank you. I see those two questions there. We've already addressed those. So I don't know. These are, are the last two, Mike. It's the last two, but well, we've already addressed both of those, I think, so they were already answered. Um, I wasn't able to answer the one. <laughs> so that's that's the question. Okay, well, if there's no other questions at this time, we are gonna stay online for a bit. Oh, there's a few more. But um, I guess if anybody, obviously people can are free to leave at any time. So, um, so that does conclude the formal part of the presentation. Um, two more questions here. Um, I'm going to move. Yeah. How has the environmental factor on the beach area been calculated in terms of additional impact, increased uh, human and car traffic? Well, nothing's been calculated yet. So, um, so we will, you know, we'll have to look at, you know, again, the, the impact of having certain, you know, level of impact from cars or humans visiting that sort of thing. Um, and uh, so we'll, we'll we'll try to consider that best as we can in the uh, in the plan. You have another raised hand. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Hi. It's Roger. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. So so uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm really not meaning to, to beat a, a dead horse here. Uh, understanding that, you know, no water development planning is or no water development is going to occur until we have funding. I understand that. But if we're in the process of actually planning, why can we not do the water plan? And, you know, that can be it can be an appendix, uh, you know, pending funding, whatever, but at least at least we should at least develop the water side of it to totally fit in to the land side of it. It makes no sense to just do the land study and do the land plan and not incorporate or have any kind of vision for the future with regards to what we're going to do with the water if and when we actually do get the infrastructure funding required to do the breakwater, to repair the piers and all of that stuff. I, I don't understand this, 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 uh, this answer where, well, well, we can't do anything because we don't have any funding. Well, that's fine. We'll get the funding later, but we should at least be, while we're doing the land planning, we should be doing the water planning at the same time to be funded at a later date. I don't understand why our politicians uh, aren't doing that. I, I don't get it. So maybe I can hop in here. So. Uh, if you have ideas about how the water lot can be developed or what you'd like to see on the water lot, submit them as part of this process and they'll be uh, at least accommodated for onshore services. That, in fairness to Mike and his team, the water lot was outside of the scope of their work. However, if you have ideas about how the water lot, the, the inner harbor, the creek, uh, what amenities you'd like to see provided, then provide that through the public input portal. Okay, but it, it seems like we're wasting another opportunity, another missed opportunity. They're doing the land planning. Why can we not incorporate the water planning? It's not rocket science. We're talking about a bunch of boat slips, some repairing some piers, maybe adding another pier to prevent the, the surge from the south. I mean, this is not rocket science, gentlemen. This is very basic stuff. And I don't understand why we can't have this team that is working on the overall land plan to also at least incorporate elements, if not all of the 
greater vision for the future when we can acquire funding to develop the water lot? So again, why, why, why the roadblocks? Your... Why, why is everyone putting up their hands saying, no, 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 we can't talk water when we live in Port Stanley? It's silly. I, I think I just actually said that, give us your ideas with what you like to see on the, on the water lot. Okay. So we're not throwing, we're not throwing up roadblocks, Roger. Okay. But we're All asking right. you to provide your ideas that you like to see. And in fairness, some of those things that you're suggesting is outside of the scope of this work and no disrespect to the project team outside of their expertise. It is, when it comes to designing breakwaters and marine infrastructure, it is outside their their expertise. But by all means, give us your thoughts. And then that way, if there's onshore services that are required uh, to support those types of, of developments, then we can take that into consideration and council can look at that at the time of the development of this master plan. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thanks, Lloyd. Yeah, I, I think just to, to build on what Lloyd said, I mean, we're, we're, you know, we can certainly take a look at what's provided or the, the ideas that are out there. I mean, it will be, you know, especially when people submit ideas and uh, it would be very hard for us to ignore them and not that we want to ignore them. Um, but as Lloyd said, we, our team is limited with, you know, we don't have a, a shoreline engineer on it. Um, something like that would take a, um, you know, a market research study to know, you know, how many boat slips would be needed, um, the size of them, you know, the breakdown, how many transient slips, all that thing. And we, you know, so we've worked on plans certainly like that with marinas and uh, water amenities. So it, it's something that our team wouldn't be able to do um, in house, but conceptually in high level, um, we could certainly incorporate whatever is provided and help address that and, and maybe identify the need for further research or looking at, you know, further study on a few aspects of that. So, um, so obviously you're not, we didn't give you the answer you wanted to hear, but um, it's obviously it's not something we can, we can address this evening, but we can certainly look at it. Um, where were we on the question? So how are we allocated police services? Summer months are crazy, William Street noise and speed. These parking lot is a mini NASCAR track. Um, well, I mean, you know, there could be, we, we could look at um, traffic calming and, and things like that to help, um, to help minimize that sort of thing. That has come up in other plans where, um, you know, we've, we've heard drag racing and you refer to as NASCAR track. So um, perhaps that is something we need to look at. Um, but in some respects, you know, beyond our study area, I guess it would be on the, beyond our, uh, our scope, but within our study area, we could certainly look at mi minimizing those opportunities. Um, people saying, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate you coming out for anybody that's uh, signing off. Um, will this include marina services, water and hydro for transient boat traffic along the harbor? Again, I think that's the type of thing that we're probably um, not focusing on for this plan. But if it does come up and it looks like there's opportunities, we can certainly flag it and provide some recommendations for further study on some of those things. Um, you know, it really, it really depends on the scope we're talking about and how, um, you know, how much infrastructure is going to be required around it. Um, because it can be expensive just to provide a safe uh, mooring location or a docking location for a boat and uh, and there might be additional uh, research that's needed. Understandably, financial considerations will ultimately determine what might be done. Will you, however, give us some blue sky alternatives to consider? Um, well, certainly we, we try not to be restricted off right off the bat by by money. Um, so, Yes, you probably will get some uh, ideas that, I mean, depending on your perspective, maybe our blue sky. Um, so as we go through the process, we're, we're going to see what, um, what is recommended, what comes out, and perhaps, uh, you know, there's some great ideas out there that need to be considered and maybe just need to be scaled back a bit, you know, to make them uh, truly implementable. So um, we, we will try not to be right off the bat focused on dollars and, and you know, and what, what, we think can be afforded in the short term. Uh, 
<laughs> we need a car and motorcycle quieting station. I'm not sure what that is, but. <laughs> Major League Baseball team stadium. Well, if the Expos and the, the Rays can't uh, share a team, I'm not sure uh, Port Stanley's getting a Major League Baseball team. Butterfly conservatory idea. Um, how can forums like this best help you help us? Well, this is all being um, all being recorded. We're you know we're, we're we're taking close consideration of everything we're hearing. So um, you know just by participating, I think that's that's helping us. If that's what I understand. Mike, I'd just like to jump in. I know the technical team's been following along here and. The amount of feedback between Slido and the comments, it's been very impressive for, for an hour and we know you're taking all this in. So it's just a really a great amount of feedback generated so far and really looking forward for that to continue to grow as we move along here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is great. And it's, it's, it's a nice switch from what often happens is you just end up staring at a webcam and not really knowing if anybody's on the other end listening. So. Um, it's great that it's uh, it's interactive like this. So we will we'll give it a, some more time. We know uh, there might be some people that are going to log on late um, and might have questions. Unfortunately, of course, they missed the presentation part. We will be posting that online. Um, so if you do, you're talking to your neighbors and you you know you mention this and they say what I didn't hear about it, you can uh, point them to the. Let's talk central elgin.ca site and uh, this will be uh, posted there and, uh, and they can then of course provide their input through that site as well. Um, there's a question there, how to, in Envisioning balancing, maybe it's how do you envision balancing the various priorities within the harbor, fishing fleet, tourism, natural environment, boating, walking paths. Well, that is often the challenge. Um, very often it is gonna come down to, you know, looking at all the input we receive. So all those different mechanisms, figuring out, you know, what, the, what makes sense for the community. So, um, the good news is that I think a waterfront can do all of those things. Um, the trick is designing it in a way that, you know, different uses aren't tripping over each other or aren't compromising each other um, and that they can all work. I mean, waterfronts are typically busy places and we wanna try to, um, you know, do what we can to, to cater to as many different groups and opportunities as possible. Uh, the question of how do we continue to interact with you? Well, that's where the, if you go to that website, uh, let's talk centralelgin.ca. Um, there's the Q and A, there's the, the, the um, you know, the, the ideas page and the, and the, uh, the map it tool or drop a pin. Um, all of that we will be monitoring. We, you know, we'll, we'll check it regularly. Um, and uh, yeah, if it's a specific question you wanna hear from the team, then the, the question and answer is probably the best way. I believe our contact information is on that site as well. So you're free to, to send an email as well if, uh, you know, if you think that's the best way. Uh, this question about future electrical upgrades in the future, we are serviced from St. Thomas and have a high number of power outages. Um, yeah, I'm not in a position to answer that one. Um, Jeff, did you wanna? <laughs> Sure, I can hop in here on this right. one. Um, any questions in regards to um, uh, power upgrades uh, should be directed to uh, Earth Corporation. Uh, they're the electrical supplier for Port Stanley. Okay, thanks, Jeff. So what I'm hearing is everything needs to be solar, so it's not interrupted, is that it? Okay. We have no more questions. We'll we'll be here for a little bit. If anybody's got any other ones, um, how can we interact with the team, Central Elgin technical staff, to geo reference the water plan? I'm not sure I answer. I understand the question. I mean, I you're looking for something that's a geo tag PDF. Is that for the 
ultimate plan. Um, I'm not sure if that's the question. That's geo reference. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe you can post another question if uh, we're not understanding. You can always send us an email if you want to engage in that conversation. Then you know, send us an, an email online, offline, and we can uh, we can figure out your needs and what you're asking. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the places tool uh, might um, be an answer for that on the Let's Talk Central Album um, website. So you can pin um, an idea or anything uh, based on a location in the plan. Thanks, Misha. Um, a question there, how do I develop the water plan for submission to council? It sounds like you want to take our job. I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, but any input you have, if you've got a plan or an idea for something for the, uh, you know, for this, uh, for this study, then please submit it to us and we'll, uh, we'll definitely consider it and possibly incorporate it. Uh, what consideration to hurricane building codes will be implemented? Um, well, that's probably getting, you know, I'm not familiar with hurricane building codes, but I'm assuming if we're talking about individual structures, um, that's not something that we necessarily be addressing in a master plan. However, um, if there was the need for an elevated level of building, um, you know, structural integrity or something for building, I guess that's something we could recommend or, or mention in the plan. Um, but as a master plan, we're, we're not dealing necessarily with built structures or forms. We're just proposing where they would go and maybe the aesthetic of them, but how they would be built would be uh, beyond the scope of the study. Um, there's a question there, how long would it take to finish this development? I, I think it's really hard to say because we don't know what we're, uh, what we're proposing yet. Um, if we're talking about the private side, which is definitely you know, part of this plan in terms of we'd influence the, uh, the rollout of it and that sort of thing, I mean, that would really be up to the uh, market forces and, you know, and private developers. So. I really don't think we could answer that question. Typically these plans, as I said, you know, 50, 10, 15, 20 years usually um, are what these master plans usually take to implement. Uh, recommend creating a subsection or subcategory within the share your ideas section for the public to contribute items to the water plan. Um, we could look and see if that's possible. I don't know if that's actually possible though with the ideas uh, if you can only have one ideas tab open at a time, so that might not be possible. But my suggestion would be if you've got a water plan suggestion, just start it by saying maybe in capital letters water plan. Um, and then, then we'll know as a team that it's something that you're focused on the water side as opposed to the land side. Um, is affordable housing a part of your plan? Well, we wouldn't be looking it's an it's a important recommendation. And we of course heard that um, accommodations for, uh, you know, affordable accommodations for people is a problem in Port Stanley, um, but it's not necessarily a part of our, of our plan because we are looking at public lands that wouldn't necessarily be supporting buildings and residential buildings and that sort of thing. So simple answer is no, but um, there might be some um, considerations that we will put in our plan that, to be investigated further. So depending on what our recommendations are, perhaps affordable housing is gonna be an important part of it, but uh, I can't say at this time. Um, how much coordination is happening amongst all three levels of government to secure development funding? I would assume, well, from my perspective, I would assume none because you don't have a plan in place yet. So it's when you actually have a plan in place that there, there might be an opportunity to secure some of that funding, um, but without a plan, you're, uh, um, you're not going to uh, um, really be able to get anybody to uh, provide funding for any part of it. 
Oh, there's a not a question for Mike, but any updates on the cash vault acquisition? Does anybody want to take that one on the technical committee? Not really relevant to the waterfront master plans, as it'd be something that would be outside of the scope of this engagement right now. So not not at this time. Okay, thank you. Well, everyone's done a good job of keeping us busy for uh, on questions. It's 20 after seven, we are scheduled to go to eight o'clock. So um, you don't feel you have to stay online. We still got 31 people in attendance. So I'm amazed. But all great questions. I'm, I'm really uh, appreciative that everyone's chiming in and, uh, and it really helps inform us, um, you know, what what's, top on people's minds and things we're gonna to need to look at and consider as we move through the process. So I thank you. It does make, when we do sessions like this, it makes it a lot easier for us to, uh, to do the plan. The worst plans are the ones where nobody comes out to public meetings, nobody responds to surveys um, because then we're left trying to figure out what to do on the plan. It's so much easier when the public is engaged, has ideas and uh, you know, it, it gives us some direction of what we need to do. You're welcome. Thanks for coming out. Question, who is a subject matter expert at Central Elegant for finding municipal, provincial and federal development funds? Uh, Mike, I can jump in and say it's a team effort. Uh, we liaise with our MP and MPP to be made aware of when those come around. And once there's a plan, uh, we can activate our uh, political sphere to, to continue to meet and, and advance those priorities. But it's a team effort uh, that works towards those uh, to achieve the best outcomes for the community. Thanks, Paul. Well, it's getting quiet. No other questions? We'll give it a few more minutes. So we don't have any questions for a few minutes. I think we'll, we might sign off. There's another question that might be for Paul. How engaged are the MP and MPP in helping us develop Central Elgin? Um, I would never want to speak for them, but uh, I would say they would uh, leave it to the, the residents and the community and, and uh, council to shape that vision. And then they would support uh, in the next phases of accessing the funding and, and, and trying to make that vision a reality. Um, but it's not something that definitely we can answer definitively for them. Thanks, Bob. Um, when there, I saw this Zoom meeting posted on Facebook. Will you be letting the participants know of the next Zoom meeting? So yes, yeah, so 
as I keep saying that, you know, let's talk central .ca, that's the way to be ins you ensure that you see all your opportunities for engagement. Um, but we will be using all the social media channels um, that central Elgin typically uses to announce the next meeting. So it hasn't been confirmed yet, but when it is, I'm sure it'll be a, another Facebook post. Uh, maybe it wasn't Central Elgin's uh, Facebook page you saw it on, I'm not sure, but uh, we would be promoting it through all different means. Uh, next one there is, uh, this may have been asked earlier, is there a timeline goal for the planning implementation? Well, the, the planning in terms of the master plan, we're looking to wrap that up in June. Um, and then based on that, if that's adopted by council, then it rolls out over a 10 to 15 year period and that would be the implementation period. Um, and generally what would happen though is just further planning and design and, and, and you know, construction documents and that sort of thing that happened in the rollout and implementation of the different pieces. So, um, so hopefully that answers your question. Is a multi-level parking garage being considered? Uh, you know, everything is on the table right now. So I don't know if that is realistic. Um, it wouldn't, I don't think that would be necessarily be a short-term thing. I also don't know if it would necessarily be on this property um, or this site, you know, these different areas they're showing, but um, you know, it's something that, you know, everything's on the table at this point. Uh, given our community and the physical layout of the Harbor, what do you see as the biggest challenge? Um, I mean, I don't know if there's, well, I think the biggest challenge that we talked about before was the, um, was the, the fact that it's on, on impacted lands and there's, you know, only so much earthworks going to happen. You really have to build up. Um, that's probably the biggest challenge of, of the berm area. Um, and the rest of it is just incorporating that commercial area, the extension of main street with everything around it. So. Um, you know, I think it's mostly, you know, there's a lot of opportunities there, more opportunities and challenges. It's a, in many ways, it's a, it's a clean slate, but I guess the, uh, the impacted area is probably the biggest challenge. What are your plans for parking other than cars like bikes? After all, biking is a popular, is popular in the port. Well, I think there would be a lot of opportunities for, for bike parking, um, that would be provided throughout, um, Will winter activities be considered in the plan? Definitely. Uh, we're looking at an all season plan. So if you've got any ideas on winter activities specifically, you think should be considered or incorporated. Um, certainly we, uh, you know, we'll, we'll want to make sure that those are incorporated. So whether it's, you know, if there's ice skating somewhere that would be encouraged or, you know, is there, you know, do you want opportunities for cross country skiing around the waterfront? Um, you know, any, any of those things could be considered, but we, we do want to hear about them. If a multi-level parking garage is being given consideration, it should be on the periphery of Port Stanley. Comment. Um, we need to listen to the needs of the next generation, especially our local students. Definitely. So, um, you know, students are encouraged to also, you know, chime in on the, uh, on the, uh, Let's talk centrallogan.ca and uh, you know provide their uh, their comments and their inputs there. When we don't hear from students enough on these projects, obviously um, there's certainly a typical demographic we we get on these public meetings. So it'd be nice to get um, a lot more younger people involved uh, throughout the process. Is there an elevator speech for the project that you could reiterate or say once again succinctly for this project specifically and your particular mandate? So basically what we're looking at is the, you know, the waterfront area, which is primarily the berm and in the uh, promenades on either side of uh, the creek. Um, we're looking at a long-term master plan for, you know, next 10, 15 years, looking at what, you know, what should be developed on the waterfront in terms of public spaces, park spaces, access to the waterfront. Um, and uh, we're are basically our product in the end is going to be a series of recommendations um, with are going to be accompanied by detailed drawings, um, specifications, materials, um, you know that sort of thing, and then an implementation strategy. So how that would play out. So I mean similar plans that you could look at if you're curious. I mean plans that we've done, but there's you know other plans out there too. Um, 
well, we just mentioned earlier in the presentation, Sarnia's waterfront master plan is getting a bit of press, so that might be an easy one to find. Um, so we just finished that with, an, with a larger team. So the scope on that is a little bigger in terms of economic development, but it's a, a similar idea. Um, so you could look at that. Kingston's water much, waterfront master plan we did a number of years ago, and that's a much bigger waterfront area, but similar. Um, you could look at Coburg's plan we did uh, a few years ago. Cornwall has a waterfront plan we did, and uh, we're just wrapping up. Um, and there's probably, there, I believe there's a draft online of some aspects of it for uh, Leamington and Iron Prior, are two projects that are for the most part done, but are waiting for uh, just because of COVID, I think, and staffing resources. They're kind of stalled, but they're pretty much done as well. So you might be able to find drafts of those ones online as well. So all those plans that I just mentioned, they would all, they all um, have different pieces or aspects of what we'd be, we'd be producing for, uh, for this plan, just to give you an idea of the scope. Uh, many visitors utilize the public boat launch. Is this part of the water portion of the plan or should it also be included in the land use portion as well? Well, I guess it is a bit of, bit of uh, both. Um, again, you know, we're looking for you know, information or ideas and recommendations from the public on all of it. So uh, we certainly will, will be you know, looking at, I believe that is part of the green area that we've identified on one of the slides. So um, it's certainly uh, part of, um, you know, part of the study area. Uh, the comment, look at the collapse of downtown Brantford. It can be directly connected to a lack of free parking. Um, what is special about Port Stanley? Not looking for flattery, but what would you tap into specifically about our community? Um, well, I guess what originally struck me about Port Stanley is, of course, the uh, the main street and the businesses there, and the the scale of it, the um, you know the uh, you know how how attractive it is, the the aesthetic of it, um, and building on that, I think I think that you know there's a lot of good things there. Um, you know, the scale of building, the scale of the street, that sort of thing. So, with building on that, I think uh, is um, is going to be important for this plan and. Um, and then also you've got this opportunity to provide, you know, more of a natural area um, around that area that's maybe different than your uh, your main beach. So um, so we don't want to repeat, of course, the main beach. I mean, you've got that and it's great. Um, and it, but I think you need to look at now um, something a little different for the for the berm area. At 7.35, we'll, we'll see if we get any more co comments or questions in the next few minutes. We're signing off. I comment Yorkville, Kensington Market, et cetera, all pay lots though, not free parking. Well, there is no free parking in Toronto. You're welcome. Thanks for, uh, thanks for participating. Councillors might be listening to it. I suspect that they're not listening in. They might might uh, listen in onto the recording that we're going to post. So we did meet with all the counselors and interview them, and they're all very interested in this project. So, um, you know, you've, 
they're definitely engaged in the project. Yeah, it is once. It's, well, I mean, it, in one hand, it is a once in a generational opportunity, and then uh, unfortunately, some municipalities will redo their waterfront plan, you know, every ten years. Our goal here is to make sure that the plan we produce, um, you know, is actually doesn't just sit on the shelf that gets used, and that's why we really, uh, really focus on implementation, and um, we make sure that it can, uh, you know. That there's the tools there and there's the ideas there to make it happen, as opposed to just being a bunch of pretty pictures that never actually um, gets developed. We have Join. a raised hand, Mike. Sure. And no, this is not a casino uh, proposal. <laughs> not that I know of anyway. Are you there, Sally? Yes, I am. Great. I just wanted to say that uh, you mentioned about counselors. The mayor has definitely been listening throughout, and I'm sure that there are at least another counselor or two that are on as well. Oh, good. Thank you, Mayor. It's great. Yeah. Again, we're we're not we're not talking about. For the most part, development on these lands. We're talking about park space, publicly accessible space. Um, you know, if there was a a casino or anything like that, it would be beyond the scope of this plan. So it's not something that will be, you know, you won't see on our on our drawings. The the area that we showed in green is our study area, and uh, you know, it's public land. It's not uh, not private, not not being developed. <laughs> Great job, motion to adjourn. I, people don't have to feel like they have to stay on. This is not, uh, you know, online school learning where we're taking attendance. So um, we're not sure who's joined late, who, uh, you know, maybe is just coming on. So um, if you've had enough of me talking, feel free to, uh, to excuse yourself quietly. We'll, we'll, we'll stay on a few more minutes in case anybody comes up with a question. Okay, well, if there are no more questions, maybe we will, uh, we will adjourn. So uh, thanks everyone for uh, participating. This went, uh, I think it went great. I think uh, we got a lot of input and uh, it seems like some of you are happy. So hopefully everyone's happy with the opportunity to uh, you know, voice your questions and concerns and your ideas, um, but please make sure it keeps coming and you, you do, uh, you go check out letstalkcentralelgin.ca to, uh, provide some more input and more detailed input. So thanks everybody. And uh, we'll sign off and uh, have a great evening. And we'll hopefully we'll see you again at the, uh, at the next uh, public information center. Thank you.